Uh, well, firstly, he just looks cool as fuck, which definitely makes a good front man. Hi, it's Johnny Took from DMAs, and I'm going to be talking about Jesus and Mary Jane. Uh, basically, Jesus and Mary Chain are a uh, Glaswegian band. I, I think the melodies are quite pop, you know, and that's what I like about them. And so basically, it's kind of like, I guess they had a lot more of a punkier vibe to them, and particularly in their early shows. Um, you know, they'd come out, just do noise for 15 minutes, and then walk off stage. Uh, I got into um, them quite late. I guess, like, you know, through high school, um, I got into a lot, of, a lot of British bands, like The Verve and Stone Roses and Oasis, and then it wasn't until later on that um, our bass player, actually, Tom Crandalls, he got me into them. And um, I guess it was when I was going to uh, gain into more of a noisier kind of shoegazy kind of vibe with uh, sonically with my music and really getting into guitar pedals and experimenting a lot of that. So it was pretty inspiring uh, music to listen to when you're kind of delving into that world. If I had to introduce someone to Jesus and Mary Chain, I'd probably play them the Darklands record. Or maybe a song like Head On, you know, which was a single, um, which was off Automatic. Yeah, just because I guess it's a little bit more of a palatable sound to uh, some of their other stuff. I think I used to do a cover of a song called Girlfriend that uh, is on Stoned and Dethroned. And, uh, but that was back when me and my brother, Maddie Took from Planet, we used to play cover gigs around Sydney together. Uh, the first Jesus and Mary Chain song I probably learnt was Girlfriend, uh, which I used to play with my brother as I mentioned before, or maybe uh, Between Planets, uh, which is on automatic as well. I'm just going to say my favourite album, and that's probably Stoned in the Throne, just because I like the way that they kind of delved a bit more of acoustics and chilled vibes, I guess, into the record, and it's still break beats, but maybe a little less noisy. Uh, well, firstly, he just looks cool as fuck, which definitely makes a good front man. I would just be intrigued um, to see how they created their sounds and what their approach was, particularly in the 90s, because, um, you know, uh, over the last 20, 30 years, um, it's changed so, so much. And I think it would have been really interesting being a band around that era, um, releasing music and trying to get signed. You know, where these days there's just so much production done in the bedroom. I try and apply kind of production aspects from 30 years ago to, you know, new stuff that people are doing now. And I think the best is when you get a blend between all of them, whether it's a mix of digital and analog or whatever. Right? You can use all these facets of it, whether it's more modern or an older technique. and the combination of them is what makes me happy. Uh, I think uh, if we're talking about like the British scene at the, t the time, I just like the, I like the fact they're from Glasgow and I like the fact that they were renowned for having that punky aesthetic, particularly in their live shows. Hey, if you enjoyed that video, click here to subscribe to Radio X. Radio X.